I'm John Gonzalez from MLive.com and Michigan's Best, and I'll be your co-host this evening. I'm in Grand Rapids, and joining us from Detroit is our other co-host, Tom Dalton. That's right. I'm Tom Dalton from the PBS TV show Under the Radar Michigan. I'm also sequestered in my office. I've been here for 40 days now. Um, and I'm, just so you know, John, I'm wearing gym shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask to see that. <laughs> I love the Internet. I Actually, I'm really excited about tonight because it, it's what we're doing is so needed. Um, and I'm also excited about the fact that we're doing it live without a net. Apparently, she couldn't make it. So, But, uh, no, I mean, it's this is going to be a great evening and a great week, actually. So, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your sofa safety belts uh, and get ready for a five-day adventure that's going to include great music, great food, uh, personalities. Um, we're going to be singing to the unsung heroes of our state. And you know this, John. It's the hospitality workers. It's the restaurant workers and the musicians that have all been displaced because of this crazy thing that's happening right now. So uh, we're going to start strong, aren't we, John, with some really, really good music? Yeah, I say let's get to it. Our first musical guest this evening is a songwriter and lead singer from the Verve Pipe, my good friend, Brian Vanderark. Hey, buddy. How are How's you? It going? I'm good. It's going great. It's good. <laughs> It's good. I'm kind of guilty. This has been a good time for me because I get to, I've been forced to be creative, you know, so. You're always creative, my friend. Well, I don't know. Now, especially I'm trying to with all these little kids running around all day. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to play for us? Uh, I'm going to play a song called Nothing But Time. I thought it was appropriate for today. Very. Okay. One heartbreak led to a hundred little mistakes that followed me down to where I lie awake. Nothing but time. And there's a girl born into light, followed her heart, but her heart wasn't right, so she gave it a name. She walks off that pain, it'll leave her in time. Nothing but time. Life is a long line of tug of wars. We want to be upright, but we're down on all fours though you know it means nothing you just can't ignore the nickel and dime and a dream is no vacane the way to survive it is to think past the pain till you can't even feel that nothing will heal that nothing but time I was born into nothing, I'm nothing to offer, and I can't offer nothing but time. I know it's left unsaid. Sometimes you think that you're better off dead, but you're better off here, safe in this bed with nothing but time. And outside the world fights and bullies each other, and it feels good to leave them behind. I was born into nothing. I'm nothing to offer, and I can't offer nothing but time. Nothing but time. Wow. That was beautiful. What and a not great one, way. Thank not, you. Not, show. not one interruption from the kids. <laughs> How about that? I've got, them, I've got them all tied up upstairs. 
Brian, can you stick around with us? Because we want to catch up with you and your career, what's happening, okay. and bring you back to play a few more songs. Sounds good, buddy. Awesome. Well, we uh, put him on hold for just a few minutes. We're going to bring him back. We have more music guests coming up later in the show. We have a special guest, uh, a baseball player. You'll get to meet him a little later. We'll talk wine. We've got so much in store for you th this show. But, Tom, we have to introduce a good friend right now. Yeah, but right now we have to bring out the man who actually conjured up this entire wonderfully crazy event. Um, who is, and that's an actual tux, by the way. He's not wearing a T-shirt that looks like one. Here he is, the hardest working man in the Michigan business, the head of Pure Michigan, Dave Lorenz. Hey, I know I look like a conductor right now, but I, you told me to dress up. So you guys are wearing, you know, like casual stuff. What's this all about? <laughs> well, I'm wearing the, the, the appropriate T-shirt. That's good. Two peninsulas, one Pure Michigan. Well, seriously, that is what this is all about. And thank you all for uh, showing up for tonight. Uh, we have a really cool week of activities all lined up. And thanks to Gonzo and Tom, they're gonna to be kind of being the conductors for the entire uh, week worth of shows as we celebrate National Travel and Tourism Week. That's what this is. I know it's a strange week and a strange year to be talking about it because we've all been kind of cooped up in our homes and we still need to stay home for a little while longer to make sure that everybody else is safe. But soon we'll be able to get out there and that'll be really important because all those tourism workers who are out of work right now will be able to get back to work. The, the truth is we know that there are literally a more than, you know, something like two, 300,000 travel workers that are out of work right now. And they're frightened. They're scared. They're, these are the people who literally serve us in normal times. And what we're trying to do this week is have a celebration of what we are and who we are. And, really think about the value of travel and tourism and these connections that we're missing so much. And during this time, we're asking you to, to give what you can, just a couple of bucks, just something toward the mralaef.org website. You can uh, make a donation there and, and all the money, 100% of the money generated is gonna go to a fund to help these uh, dislocated workers. So do what you can. And if you can't give anything right now, we understand. Stick around all week and have a good time because we're going to have a really good time together because that's a big part of this, isn't it, guys? Coming together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well said, Dave, and we are, we are excited to, to be part of this. Thank you so much for asking us. I know Tom is equally as excited about it as well, um, but uh, you couldn't have said it better. Um, but real quick, though, uh, it's, it, this money is going to go to those workers, right? It is. Uh, you know, you think about uh, all those folks out there, the the baristas and the restaurant folks and the hotel folks. And uh, actually, musicians are out there, you know, that are usually working in the bars and restaurants and such. All those people who make our lives so much better as we're traveling, as we're having our vacations, just maybe uh, enjoying lunch or breakfast with friends. Uh, so many of them are out of work right now because, as you know, restaurants aren't open and, and most hotels aren't open right now. Uh, so they're doing what they can just to survive. And the MRLA has put together this fund uh, that these folks can apply for. So every dollar you give tonight and the rest of this week is going to go uh, to help them out. So uh, please do what you can. And like you were saying, John, they really are the unsung heroes and the rock stars uh, of our entire state. They make our lives so much more fun and enjoyable. Uh, and if it wasn't for these people, you know, We'd be stuck in here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe in rock stars. Speaking of such rock stars, let's bring oh, them back. Hello. Brian, Brian Vander Ark. Someone called uh, my name. <laughs> you know something about being a rock star. Uh, can you uh, play some other song? Yes, of course. Uh, this song is called Miracle Mile. <laughs> In the moment, let it out, and then again, stay in this moment for this one miracle mile. When you hear the birds sing your praise, where you feel the breeze on your face. When you reach the end of your race, 
know that I'll be there. Feel every heartbeat, take the love and own the pain. Look for the sunshine, it hides behind the sheets of rain. And when you feel you can't keep the pace, the wind will snap your sails back into place and soon you'll feel the sunlight on your face and know that I'll be there not every mile can be a miracle mile we all stumble once once in a while but in the end they're waiting all the while know that i'll be there that was you absolutely beautiful thank beautiful you. beautiful thank you guys thank you appreciate you got you got one more for us before we bring him back even again <laughs> Of course. Uh, I'll play that song I wrote for that movie called Rockstar. You guys know this? Yes, I know this song. This is called Colorful. The show is over. Close the storybook. There will be no encore. And all the random hands that I have shook will bear. Reaching for the door I watch their backs as they leave single file Used to stubborn Cheering all the while I, I know I can be colorful I, I know I can be gray I know this loser's living fortune now Cause I know you will love me either way Most will be in good for goodness sake But you, you wouldn't pantomime Oh, and you are more beautiful when you awake than most are in a lifetime. Oh, but through the haze, that is my memory. Well, you stayed for drama, though you paid for a comedy. And I, I know I can be colorful. I, I know I can be gray. I know this loser's living fortune now. Cause I know you will love me either way. Oh, but look ahead as far as you can see. Well, we'll live in drama, but we'll die in a comedy. And I, I know I can be colorful. I, I know I can be gray. I know this loser's living fortune now Cause I know you will love me the way And I know I can be colorful I know I can be gray I know this loser's living fortune that I know 
you will love me the way Brian Vanderark from the 2001 film Rockstar with Jennifer Aniston, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, we could spend an hour talking about that. But before we talk a little bit more about the film, I should say, everyone watching, and thank you so much. I know you're tuning in on Facebook right now. We appreciate it. We're trying to raise money for a great cause, which is to help hospitality and tourism workers throughout the state of Michigan. Feel free at any time to ask questions on Facebook. Well, Tom and I are able to to read some of your questions and uh, maybe ask the performers uh, themselves, you know, if something that's on your mind. All right, uh, <laughs> Tom, Tom, Brian, I should say, Brian, uh, you know, you and I did a podcast where we talked about this movie. It is now becoming one of your most requested songs, Colorful. Yeah, it's crazy how it took this long for that song to be a hit. Finally, <laughs> you know, that movie is played all the time on VH1 or wherever and, uh, and I'm thankful that it is because at the time, you know, that album was released and the movie was released right around 9-11, like a week after or something. And so nobody was going to movies. Nobody was buying anything, you know, kind of like, I mean, it feels like this kind of time right now, you know, uh, where nobody knew what was going to happen next and the whole thing. So everybody stayed put. But over time, um, that song has become a little hit for us. And it's nice. That is by far our most requested now, along with the, uh, people covering it i've seen a lot of people cover it as well all over the world it's great it's great well, i love watching that movie in the reruns because you get to see yourself in there you're in the film yeah oh yeah well i've got the dvd and i just watch it over and over <laughs> i've seen the movie a few times but uh i haven't seen it in quite some time i think i'll probably sit down and have to check it out again i was going to ask you brian you recorded uh, an album with uh jeff daniels a couple years ago what was that experience like Amazing. Amazing. He's a great, great guy. Great Michigan uh, supporter and uh, just a really good songwriter and, and singer and uh, and also a, um, a great guitarist as well. In fact, he's doing a live thing tonight as, uh, as well. Yeah. Um, from Mich from the Chelsea Theater. Yeah. Uh, so terrific, terrific guy. And that experience, of course, was wonderful. I mean, he's you know, he's he's a friend who's a great uh, collaborator as well. You know, he knows a good story. I think he comes from that background. You know, the acting background helps. So if I had an idea and I didn't know how to make the story more compelling, I'd go to him and he'd say, you should do this, you know, and then I would try to put some pop sensibilities into what he's doing as well. You know, so it, it was a really terrific collaboration and we made a pretty good album i thought well, if, if you don't mind can you stick around just a little bit and we'll have you do just one more yeah sounds good of course awesome. uh brian i did want to ask you um real quick though like jeff daniels you decided to stay in michigan yeah. um what is it about the state that you love so much I mean, I when when I met my wife, my wife's from Northern California. I met her. I, I convinced her to come to Michigan. I wasn't completely honest about the weather situation, frankly. <laughs> but I got her to move here, and then we got pregnant right away, so she was stuck. Uh, <laughs> no, but, you know, the thing about this is it's just a terrific place to raise your family. Um, I'm a huge fan of Western Michigan. I mean, I grew up here, grew up in Middleville, lived in Grand Haven for a while. I mean, I've and went to high school in Grand Rapids, so... This, this is just, it's all about the people. That's the thing. I mean, this really are great people. Um, and, uh, and I'm proud to be, I'm definitely proud to be a Michigander. And I wear that on my sleeve every single day, for sure. Wherever I go on tour, all over the place, we talk about Michigan. So, Yeah, I have so many friends that uh, went away and most of them all came back. Yeah, you can't, you can't go, you can go away, but it's always home. Michigan is yeah. always home. You know, I lived in LA, I lived in New York, but it was always like, oh, I'm going home, going home for the weekend. You know, what? What are you in college? What do you mean you're going home? <laughs> you're home here. No, it's in Michigan. It's my home. We're so glad that you're here. So can you play that one more song for us? Yeah, man, of course. Um, we'll do, uh, why don't we do the freshman? We'll do that. Why not? Why not? Close it out. When I was young, I knew everything. She a punk who really ever took advice Now I'm guilt-stricken sobbing with my head on the floor Stop a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice No, can't be held responsible Cause she was touching her face I won't be held responsible she fell in 
love in the first place For the life of me I cannot remember What made us think that we were wise And we'd never compromise For the life of me I cannot believe We'd ever die for these sins We were merely fresh men My best friend took a week's vacation to forget her His girl took a week's worth of valium and slept And now he's guilt-stricken sobbing with his head on the floor Thinks about her now and how he never really wept, he said held responsible she was touching her face I won't be held responsible she fell in love in the first place for the life of me I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we'd never compromise for the life of me I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely fresh men. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We try to wash our hands of all of this. We never talk of our lack in relationships. How we're guilt stricken, some with our hands on the floor. We fell through the ice when we tried not to slip, we'd say, hey, we can't be held responsible. She was touching her face. I won't be held responsible, no. She fell in love in the first place for the life of me. I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we never compromised for the life of me. I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen for the life of me. I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we'd never compromised for the life of me. I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely fresh men. We were merely fresh men. We were only fresh men. Brian Vanderark, uh, someone commented, I think it was Wanda, that said that song just never gets old. Who knew that uh, when you wrote that? Song in the break room of the MC Sporting Good off of 28th Street. It'd be such a big hit. <laughs> Never gets old for who? It gets old for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, so much, my friend. Oh, for you're me. so welcome, man. Yeah, you, thank you, Brian. You're doing a great thing here, and I appreciate it. I'm, I'm proud to be a, uh, at least play some songs for you. Thanks again. Appreciate it, buddy. Well, thanks, guys. Take care. Well, Tom, uh, I don't know how to top that. <laughs> Well, real quick before we move on, I got to do a plug for these T-shirts because just oh. like this, just like this event. Two hosts, one great event. You can get this T-shirt. Two peninsulas, one pure Michigan. If you purchase one of these, just go to the link below. If you when you not if, but when you are donating, um, and five dollars from the sale of each one of these shirts goes to the cause. So uh, it's a great cause, and it's, it's a very nice T-shirt. Um, now, next up, right now, John, I think we could all use a little normalcy in our lives, and nothing makes you more feel more normal in the spring than America's pastime, which is baseball. Well, since there's no baseball right now, I thought we'd get our baseball fix with, there, there is, John Schreiber. He's a, a, you're, you're a relatively new relief pitcher for the Tigers, correct? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, got called up last year, so it's been an incredible year. Well, I understand you were tearing things up in the minor leagues, um, so we're so happy to have you. And so maybe greater things will there will be greater things for the Tigers in the future. But um, what's it feel like right now not being able to play? Um, I'm definitely itching to get back. I mean, uh, you know, when I first came back up, when we heard uh, they don't know how long it's going to be, 
yeah. for this uh, quarantine, you know, um, took a couple of weeks off and then I was like, man, I need to stay ready and be ready to roll. So, I mean, I've been throwing almost every day, throwing bullpen, staying ready, working out, running, doing all that kind of stuff. So we're all pretty uh, excited to get back here. So. So I was going to ask you if you've been throwing things at the cat or how are you how you're keeping your your arm warmed up, but you actually get to go to the uh, you go to the park. Um, no, I actually just you know found uh, one of my buddies uh, from high school. He uh, contacted me, asked me if I wanted to throw, and I was like, yeah, I need to throw. So let's go uh, to our local high school field and you know get some throws in, some long toss, and all that kind of stuff. So now, you're now you're originally from Down River. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I'm from uh, Rock, Rockwood, Michigan. Uh, know it very well. Very well. Have you ever been to TV's Deli Diner down there? Um, I have not, but everybody always tells me to go there. <laughs> right off. What is that off? Um, what street is that off of? Oh, God. It's been a while since I've been down there. I know where it's at, though. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a great place. Hey, John, you know Michigan real well. You spent some time with the West Michigan Whitecaps back in 2017, where you had a pretty impressive streak, if I remember, where you had like a scoreless streak. I don't think anyone scored a run on you like after June 12th or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think I blacked out that season. It's going to be pretty hard to top that. <laughs> yeah, but you've traveled the state quite a bit, downriver, over here in Grand Rapids. What are some of your favorite places to eat, Uh Tom mentioned TV, which is a great place, but what are some of your favorite places? Um, what Leo's Coney Island. I like going there. Um, you know, in Detroit, they got the Coney Islands there, Lafayette, American. Which I like one? going there. Which one? Um, Lafayette. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> just checking. True Detroit. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there's just so many places to go here in Michigan. And, you know, I can't even name them all. So, but those are a few of my favorites. Well, we can't wait to get back to the park. And back to, like I said, some normalcy. Uh, it's, it's America's pastime. And, I mean, you've got to miss it terribly. I mean. Yeah, I'm, I miss it. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, do you guys, you guys all get together on Zoom and talk? Um, you know, we text here and there. Had a couple FaceTimes. You know, that West Michigan team, uh, you know, we had such good chemi chemistry. And, uh, you know, we're all just still really good friends. And we're still talking to each other on you know, social apps like Snapchat and all that. So we're all, you know, communicating with each other and having having some fun during this time. So, John, I have to ask you the big question. Are you still number 71? Yeah, I'm going to keep number 71. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always, yeah. I've always wanted to ask you this. What, what did it feel like the moment you got the call and you were called up to the major leagues? I mean, it's every kid's dream to play sports. What does that feel like? I mean, it's just incredible. Um, you know, in college, like starting off at Henry Ford and, you know, playing high school ball, you know, it's always been my dream to play professional baseball. Um, you know, and I've always had doubts, you know, I was like, I felt like I would have to work, uh, you know, extra hard to try and get up there. And, you know, I doubted myself a lot. And when I, when it finally, when I finally got the call, you know, it was just surreal. I broke down crying uh, when the manager told me in Toledo and, you know, talking to the pitching coach in Toledo, you know, it was just an awesome moment. So what, what's it mean to you to play for your, uh, your hometown team? That, I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> it's, I'm so thankful to this organization, you know, drafting me in 2016, uh, you know, with white caps, you know, I'm so close to home wherever their minor league teams are at, you know, and it's just been awesome being, so close to my family, my wife, and, you know, it's just awesome. It's like, what is it, three hours from here, from West Michigan, 45-minute drive to Toledo, 30-minute uh, drive to Detroit. So, you know, it's just awesome. Well, John, thanks for doing this with us because it means a lot, and we're trying to we're trying to help the, the folks out there that, that feed us, that put us up, the, mus the musicians that play for us. So it, it means a lot that you took the time to do this for us. Oh, no problem at all. I also got to get one of your, one of those shirts you got on too. So. <laughs> yeah, just go to the link below. You can get one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. We appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, yeah, buddy. thank you guys. It's always good to talk a little Tiger baseball, isn't it, Tom? Yeah. Now it's time to talk the UP. Ah. If, well, I'm, looking, gonna... if I'm looking at the schedule right. <laughs> well, okay, we could do that, but I think we have to bring in 
Uh, oh, we have to bring in Justin. and We have to bring in Dave first, then right. Justin. Right, right. For <laughs> Oh, here he is back again for an encore performance, Dave Lorenz. Hey, hey, you know, guys, I pitched for the Whitecaps one time. Well, I, I pitched at the Whitecaps. They have one of those pitching games. And and I, I think I got it up to like 30 miles an hour. Whoa. Throw out my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how fast those guys can throw. I actually played catch with a minor leaguer once. And I unbelievable how fast that ball comes. Isn't it going to be great when we can see Tiger baseball and see yeah. gaps and all the other, you know, you know, ball games around the, the state and all the other things that we just miss right now. We miss those connections. We miss those opportunities to see places and people and uh, folks, we're going to be able to do that pretty soon. But right now is the time to dream and to plan. And uh, we really do recommend you go to Michigan.org and do your trip planning right now and make your bookings right now. But the first thing you should do is go to MRLAEF.org and make a, a donation toward this fund. We're trying to bring in some money for uh, some folks who uh, really could use it right now. Those people who are usually literally serving us. And I know uh, our friend Justin Winslow knows a lot about those folks as well. That's true. Thank you, guys. You look good tonight, by the way. The T-shirt's looking good. Waiting for Gonzo to go like full Superman. <laughs> oh, it's on. <laughs> it's, it's on. <laughs> uh, no, this is this entire week is amazing. Um, Dave, thank you for the The concept is pure gold. It's always good to be able to work with Tom. And MLive has been an amazing partner. We're just so appreciative because we hear every day about, about the need and some of the experiences, the over 350,000 employees in this state who are used to serving you every day, putting a smile on your face every day, can't do that anymore. Uh, so they're appreciative of everything you can do to help. And to give you a sense of what it's been like, we opened this thing up without any pre-advertising and the fund was over flooded. Our, fl our, our site shut down within the first 24 hours because we had about 4,500 applications come in uh, looking for, for relief from the relief fund. Uh, so we've already put more than $250,000 out to over 700 recipients, uh, but we're, we're out and we need and we need more. And the people working in the state or who were working in the state in this industry really need your help right now. And so this entire week is is just a real godsend for them. So thank you again. Well, and I, and I know that um, you at the MRLA are trying to get as many uh, folks around 300 or so dollars, um, something like that, up to 500 or so. Um, I had somebody actually ask me the other day is, you know, what's a couple hundred bucks going to do? Well, I remember being there and that was a lot of money to me at one time. Be a lot of money right now if I was unemployed. Yeah. And that's really what this is all about. We're trying to help people who um, are pretty desperate right now. So we want to celebrate all that we are. You know, we want to be because we are proud Michiganders and we're proud, pure Michiganders. But um, we also want to help people. So that's what this is really about uh, this week. So uh, let's keep on having a good time during this show and the rest of this week. But let's uh, let's give a little bit, too. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. We appreciate uh, Dave uh, and Justin, of course, uh, catching us up on what's going on with what we're doing here, why we're here tonight. So, uh, Dave, we're going to now... Go to the UP, if that's okay with you. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm a Uper wannabe. <laughs> uh, I think we are. Uh, Tom, you enjoy the UP, don't you? Yeah, I'm actually up there so much filming for the show that I, I think they've made me an honorary weekend Uper. But um, I I love the Our My favorite episodes are our UP adventures because uh, we're up there for quite a while. We get up, We'll spend a whole week up there. Um, I love the people, the culture, the art, the food the natural beauty. Every time we cross the bridge, we say the same thing. Oh, look, Rocky outcroppings. It's completely different because it is. It's completely different up there. Um, I call it our own out west is what I call it. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I know that when Amy Sherman and I travel uh, to the Upper Peninsula for Michigan's best, we always kind of hope that the bridge closes for weather reasons and we yeah. kind of get stuck up there, you know, uh, in those long drives when it's just nothing but just pure Michigan beauty, the natural resources, you know, and that breath of fresh air. And then the people, like you said, so genuine, so real, they'll do anything for you. Um, and uh, one of the things that we love about being up there yeah. is the food. No. Oh. The food is wonderful. And, and there's one, there's a couple of special foods up there. One is Kudigi. Kudigi sausage, yeah. Yeah, sausage, which I'd never had before, which is wonderful. But 
everybody knows about pasties. Everybody knows about them, but a lot of people still haven't had them. I, I don't know if it's the rutabagas or what it is that scares them, but we have the professor of pasties with us tonight, I believe. Yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah, Brian, Brian Harsh. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing well, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Very good. Doing Brian, good. Brian at uh, Gene K's, uh, Amy and I did Michigan's Best Pasty a few years ago. We fell in love with your place. I think we fell in love with you and your story. Uh, you're in Marquette, Michigan. If you could tell folks real quick your story, because you have an interesting one, my friend. Well, I've been up here since uh, 19. Uh, I've been up here since 1978, in Marquette. Uh, my my family and myself started a business in Iron Mountain, Michigan, in 1975. So I'm kind of dating myself. Uh, 45 years in the business. Wow. 45 years in the business, but, but you, you sold the business and came back. Oh, Why yeah, is that? yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I did sell the business and things didn't work out for those folks. So I bought it back. <laughs> well, you, cause you wanted to do it right. Well, you know, I thought I did it right the first time, but you know, sometimes you got to do it right the second time too. Right. And sometimes the third, but yeah, well, uh, there won't be a third. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 64. So, I mean, I think I got to, you know, yeah. Just starting to make, now, make this thing. Now, are pasties your specialty? We specialize in pasties. Yes, um, we do. But we sell all different types of things. We have uh, we have kudigi, uh, right. but we're not a we're not a specialty kudigi place. Now, now, is this an old family pasty recipe, or is this well, something you got on, on the it internet? The crust came from my mother and grandmother. Um, my mother made the best pie crust, and my grandmother made the best pie crust. Uh, we make a Cornish style, which is um, we, use, we don't use hamburger, nothing's ground. We use a combination of lifter steak meat, and uh, it's a it's a whole different uh, uh, style. Can you explain the pasty for those that might not know, which is hard to well, believe? Yeah, the word pasty means leftover. First of all, it's it, it comes from Cornwall. It's it's old English, um, and in Canada, the word pasty means uh, without pan. So I don't. But anyway, we'll go with we'll go with what I've been told in the last uh, 45 years. Um, but uh, it was brought over by the Cornish miners in the 1840s in Calumet. We all know Calumet almost was going to be our capital, guys. Uh, we had 60,000 people there during the copper rush. Yeah. So yeah, now, now it's amazing. Now, you know what I call pasties? I call them a portable pot pies you can put in your pocket. Well, I, I'll tell you what, you want to put one in your pocket, it's going to be warm. <laughs> well, now the big debate, ketchup or gravy? Well, let me tell you something. Over the years, I, I introduced gravy back in the 80s because I got tired of people from lower Michigan coming up here and telling me that they got to put gravy on their pasties because they've been getting them at the bridge. So I felt, hey, I can make some extra money here. So we started making gravy. But true youpers. It's ketchup. Really? Yeah, it's ketchup. That's what I use. That's what I well, use. I make my own sauce, guys. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, it's the jalapeno sauce. I mean, it's called kick and pasty sauce. It's good on other stuff, too. Love, I love that sauce. Uh, Amy and I put so much on it when we were there because we just love it so much. But, hey, real quick, do you have some pasties coming out of the oh, oven there? Let's take a look at them. Yeah, I want to see a rutabaga. I've never seen a real rutabaga. <laughs> There they are. Today. How do you get them to stick to the pan like that? <laughs> That's the secret, buddy. Magnet. Those, those That's are beautiful. Yeah, awesome. those, are, those are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And you gotta you gotta come up here, you know. Uh we'll give you a pasty and sit on my porch and you can talk to people. Um, Brian, real quick, what's uh, what's downtown Marquette like right now for you guys? You're, you're on Prescott though, right? I'm on Prescott. I'm across from the world's largest wooden dome. So I I, I, I got my own neighborhood. We have our own neighborhood here. Uh, downtown, downtown is starting to come alive. Uh, hopefully uh, after the 28th, we see more and more uh, action down there. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about Marquette and the UP is you've got lots of beautiful natural space to social distance. We so do. Yeah. So I mean, if you want to get out and you want to be outside, you want to go somewhere, it's just easy to get away from people. I mean, Marquette's a good sized town. You can be with people or but it's also easy just to get to get away. 
It is. It is. It, it, it offers a lot. It, we have a lot up here. A namely resource, but we also have a lot of people resource, too. I'm amazed how how smart youpers are. And I'm proud to be one, you know, born and raised, you know. It's 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 a wonderful place to be from. Let me tell you. Brian Harsh from uh, Gene K's Pasties and Subs on our search for Michigan's best pasty. You're in the top 10, my friend. Uh, you're one of the best in the UP. Real quick, can you tell us the ingredients of a Cornish style pasty? Well, we use uh, rutabaggies, we use onions, potatoes, steak, uh, beef suet. We don't use any lard in our crust. Uh, that's the key. That's the key. That's where you get that nice, rich flavor is from the beef suet. Yeah, I I'm called you. Never, I've still never seen a wild rutabaga. <laughs> I'll capture one for you. <laughs> well, I, know I, call, I know I called you on a Saturday night and you were busy, so I'm glad to hear the business is picking up yeah. and people are coming out. Things have been decent. We're looking forward to uh, complete opening and, and the rest of us doing some business. I really am. Yeah, and luckily, a root, uh, our uh, pasty is a great takeout, carryout food. So. It is. It is. My friend, it's we'll see you. We'll see you uh, hopefully this summer. You will. I hope so. I hope to see everybody this summer. All right. Take care, hey, Brian hey. Harch, Gene K's pasties and subs. Great place to go to, a Marquette. Uh, I don't know about you, Tom. I'm getting thirsty. I've been enjoying my uh, coffee from. Uh, my Gaylord mug, but uh, as far as I know, that's coffee, right? <laughs> it, it is coffee. I can vouch for that. Um, but right now, I, I wish I could pour a little glass of vino. You know what? I have to tell you that um, I'm a student of wine, um, and there's only two kinds of wine in the world. That's it. The kind you like and the kind you don't like. My problem is I like, I like all of them. So, <laughs> But, yeah, wine's been helping all of us get through this crazy time right now. And we've got two people that we want to bring on right now who know a lot about wine and are helping a lot of people get through this, right? Hey, yeah. thank you guys. Hi thank guys. you for having us. I'm yeah. so, it's so amazing what you're doing and we appreciate it. I know, uh, you know, <clears throat> obviously a lot of people need this everywhere and it's good to see that, you know, communities, people are gathering together to help each other out. Well, well we, uh, should, we should say who they are. <laughs> I was, I was going to say they need no introduction. Sure. Carter, Carter Osterhaus, uh, Amy Smart, of course, Amy Smart Osterhaus. Uh, thank you for joining us today on the show. And uh, folks, again, a reminder, if you're just tuning in or you want, please share this with your friends, um, ask questions, comments, which we really would love to hear from you uh, throughout this uh, broadcast tonight. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Northern Michigan wine, because I think Michigan wine uh, Carter and Amy, I don't know if, what your experience is. Uh, I think we're a little underrated. In Michigan, we love our Michigan wine and we're supportive, but I think we're a little underrated on a national level. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, that's kind of the reason we got into it. You know, when I first started this with my brother, this was like a quest to know that, you know, I, I, I was born and raised in the cherry industry, you know, pulling tarps, you know, every summer. It was not fun. And, um, but we're, you know, it's such a good producer of ag. Uh, that we have all around the state and particularly in, in Traverse City with the cherries. And, you know, a lot of places were switching over, even the farms that I grew up on and, and working on had switched over to, you know, making wine and producing grapes. And then when they started doing it, they started doing it really well. And, um, you know, people were kind of surprised, taken, taken back by it. And so we got into it, my brother and I, um, probably about 12 years ago. And um, we planted, uh, we started out, planted about 20, 25 acres. And, and now, you know, with all the other wineries, I mean, there's some, some decent wineries that are up north. And they're playing in some big leagues as far as, uh, as, far as uh, winning awards throughout not just the country but the world. Yeah, I was actually a celebrity guest judge at the, the big Michigan wine competition a couple of years ago. And at my table, we tasted 120 wines. What? Wow. How do you do that? <laughs> well, well, you don't. You just taste them. That's the problem. You don't get to swallow. Them. But um, um, I, I was never a Pinot guy until I tasted yours. Um, wow! What a good. I know that one. And, this one? Uh, yeah, that one, right? There. I should have known you'd have one close. We're going to be opening and drinking. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you do wonderful things with that grape. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. You know, that's kind of the hard part is when you start, you know that. The Rieslings, which is a little Alsatian in style, yeah. the uh, Chardonnays, they play really well and on a big scale. But our winemaker was very, you know, adamant. We need Pinot Noir. It's going to be the next thing that really pops in this industry. And, and so 
we went ahead we planted a lot of it and um i appreciate you saying that because that's a that's a wine that we we find open and we're drinking it a lot at our house too yeah, right i think now. we're all drinking a lot of it this these days no. yeah. <laughs> now carter and amy you guys at bonobo winery uh, along with uh, todd um have been doing an incredible job of keeping your your consumers your your followers you know, up to date on what's happening you're doing a great job on your facebook page of offering tastings and you know just different things to be involved with the community right yeah. um so bonobo is that your philosophy just to stay in touch with those people that love you guys so much yeah i mean look you know at bonobo the reason we named it after a, a chimpanzee well an ape was right. because they're very social species and the whole business model was to get people together and and you know share a glass of wine and and hang out and have some fun. Well, now you can't do that. So we've kept that going by doing a Zoom sort of Facebook Live on Bonobo's site every Friday. And um, you know, a portion of, of the proceeds, they actually go to people who are on the front lines as well. So we're helping with Beaumont Hospital, Henry Ford, you know, that really was wanting to get some dollars and some help in any way for people who are on the front lines. And we wanted to assist and you know the the first responders and now we're sort of you know moving it a little bit more so we can physically help people who may need food baskets and stuff like that so we're trying to do as much as we can so that way when people have a glass of wine from bonobo they realize that they're helping out too well that's so commendable that you guys are using a winery to help people at this time and it's so nice that you're making this wine that's helping me personally get through this at this time so i i want to thank you for that yeah. But yeah, what you guys, I mean, you guys are so multidimensional. It's its just wonderful what you guys are doing. Well, I, I love, Amy, that you're also bringing the star power to uh, Bonobo, too, and, and to Michigan. Yeah. Uh, you've had some pretty cool friends on the on the uh, Zoom chats. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, right now we've had a lot of Carter's Fun Trading Spaces buddies. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's sort of perfect because everyone loves home improvement shows. It's sort of the universal love by everybody, especially right now that so many people are home and watching. So I think it's been fun having you and your friends do that. And we're gonna bring some some actors, celebrity friends on. Yeah, up. now we're starting to roll out her friends and all the actor people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm curious, Amy, because you know Carter grew up in Traverse City area and right there, and you, you, you got married there. So yeah. what was it like for you not being a Michigander, exploring and just, finding out about this great state? Well, it's always been actually the second home for me because my grandparents had spent all summer in Northern Michigan. So every summer since I was about five, we'd go up there and spend a few weeks. And then my parents bought some land up in Northern Michigan and built a house and now they live up there permanently. So it's somewhere that I've started going to way before I knew this dude. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, when I met him, I thought maybe there was another Traverse City somewhere because I couldn't believe that I had met somebody from Traverse City. Because to me, Traverse City is not the most common place that people know about outside of the Midwest. If you're talking to people in New York or California, they're like, Traverse City? Oh, I think I've heard of that place. But when I met him, he's like, no, I'm from Traverse City. It's just like a fun <laughs> No, it can't be my special Traverse City that I go to. It's like, slow down, lady. Slow down. I, I was born and raised. But I love Michigan, and it's so true. The people are so kind. There's such a warmth to the people of Michigan. And I love the Great Lakes. I mean, it's just, it's so picturesque. And, and the just the landscape is so beautiful. And I have to say, I am an ocean girl because I grew up in California. But I am a total convert. I would rather be on the lake than at the ocean. So, wow, yeah, it's true. I just love the lake so much. But um, so I love I love being there. It does feel like home to me, and I love the. I just I I love so many things. Although I don't love the winter so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, none of us do. <laughs> well, Carter, I got to tell you, just so you don't feel left out. Um, my wife and I are huge fans of trading spaces. Um, uh, thank you, fans. Uh, we never decorated anything, but we're still huge fans. <laughs> but I'm an even bigger fan of your wine um, and what you guys are doing up there. Because um, Traverse City is one of my favorite places as well to go in the entire state. It's my wife and I have actually talked many times about retiring up there someday. So mm. I'd be your neighbor. 
Yeah, I mean, if you do, you got to let me know. We, I, I know of a winery we could hit up. <laughs> you think? <laughs> It'll be open. We, we should also mention to everyone that it is Michigan Wine Month this month. So yeah. uh, Michigan has an incredible scene, not only in Traverse City, but Southwest Michigan, Southeast Michigan, five different wine trails throughout the state. And uh, I, I'm sure that uh, Amy, you and Carter have had a chance to uh, check out different places as well. So it's cool to celebrate Michigan Wine Month, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, again, it sounds crazy when, you know, to people out on the West Coast, when we talk about Michigan wine, still to this day. But you know what? For me, that's the best part about it. That's why I feel like Michigan is in the wine industry, our ceiling, we don't even know where it's at because we have so much of an opportunity there because we have fantastic, wonderful wine, amazing people, an amazing state that is, is, you know, we can't wait to get back to you. We're just trying to, how to figure out how to get back there right now. <laughs> well, con continued success to, to both you, to to, uh, to uh, Carter as well there at Bonobo Winery and your whole crew because they work so hard at the winery to produce uh, world-class wine. Um, so we really appreciate you being on today's show and helping out this great cause. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Thank you guys for having us. Thank, Thank you, you for what you're doing. And thanks for that wine, the Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, they're such sweet people, right? Genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got the he's got the face I ordered, but this is what came from Amazon. I don't understand what happened. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, you know, um, yeah, it's just so cool. So don't forget, folks. It's mrleaf.org. Uh, the the site is right there. Uh, you can get uh, Tom's cool shirt on the link as well. Um, you're going to get up and show it again? Okay, you, you can do that if you, you want to. You're showing off my tremendous pectoral muscles. Yes, uh, thank you so much for joining. We, we, have a, we have one more thing for you before we take off here. I believe we need to play a little music, Tom. Yeah, actually, I am really personally excited about our next guest um, because, I mean, this, this lady has written and performed with some of Country Western's best. Um, she's probably one of the most soulful country singers that you'll ever hear. Um, boy, I can't even. <laughs> you want me to handle it? No, I was starting to cry there. No, it's uh, uh, no, it's Julianne Ankeley is is the is a performer, and we're bringing her out. There she is. Hi. Hi, Julianne. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me be part of this. I'm really happy to be here. How do how do you look so good during this entire thing that's happening right now? <laughs> It's um, what do you call those things? Tints or whatever you can put on there. Uh, um, Filters. Photo edit. No, not yeah. really. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, if you've never if you've never heard Julianne Ankley uh, sing, you have an absolutely wonderfully soulful voice. Oh, thank um, you so much. And you have two songs especially that I love. I'm not going to tell you what they are, just in case you're not going to play them. But if you do, I'll let you know. But um, well, you're yeah, you have play... to let me know somehow. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. But if you could play for us right now, that'd be great. Oh, sure. I'm going to play a brand new song for you. Um, it's coming on my next next album, which will be out sometime this year if I can ever get, get rolling and finish it. So um, this is called Let's Paint a Beautiful Life. Today's the first day of forever. The kaleidoscope of the rest of our lives. Blank canvas for whatever. A palette of dreams like a Texas sky. Let's paint a beautiful life. Your colors running into mine. Line like the Ark of July. And by the beautiful light See the northern lights up in Alaska Kept me on high down in Times Square Ride a buckskin in Nebraska Watch the Key West sunset disappear Like the 4th of July. Just 
Just close your eyes and picture this. A million shades of happiness. We'll do it one frame at a time. Then paint a beautiful life. I'll keep the blues from your brown eyes and paint a beautiful light. All your colors running into mine. Let's paint a beautiful BMI recording artist Julianne Ankley. That's beautiful song. <laughs> Are we still there? We're yeah. still here. Yes. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah. Here we go. Now, uh, now, Julianne, you're out of Port Huron, correct? You still there? Yes, I am. I love that town. It's one of my favorite places. It's only about 45 minutes from where I live, so uh, we go up there a lot. Walk along, you know, the river walk there, and it's just a great place. Um, how are things going up there right now? Well, I don't know. I stay in my house like a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I walk along the shore as often as I can because that's where I find my peace. And it is really beautiful. Really. Yeah. It's amazing how aqua blue the water is up there. It's just, it's a beautiful town. It really, really is. I, sometimes I think it looks like it's the Caribbean. Here. It's a little colder, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it is really beautiful. Julianne, for those just uh, tuning in or those uh, that might not know a lot about you and your career. I, I can't can you hear me? you. <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> well, okay. Can you hear him? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Now, your band is called the Rogues, correct? Yes, yes. So what's it, what's it like being rogueless? <laughs> I miss my Rogues. Well, uh, Roger, Rob, Roscoe, and Ana Maria are all fantastic musicians in their own right. But when we get together, um, it's just magical. You know, there's a, there's a lot of energy that happens, and, it, and it's so fun to play with them and see songs come to life. I miss them very much. <laughs> well, it's tough for musicians right now. We're doing this to raise money for um, restaurant workers, for hospitality workers, and for musicians, because right now you folks can't get out and do what you normally do. It's right. You're right. Um, fortunately we're able to get online a little bit and stay um, interactive with our audiences and our, our fans. Um, but we rely almost entirely on the tourism um, in Michigan. And so if, if the tourism isn't working, that means the workers aren't getting paid that and it's scary for everybody. And I think it's going to have an effect further out than we maybe even know for now. So um, when I was asked to do this, I was, I was very happy to do it. Um, those people need help too. So. Yeah, you've played the uh, the Village Theater up in up in Lexington, haven't you? I've played there uh, twelve times. Yes. Yes, that's not a beautiful. That's a beautiful place. It's it's probably my most favorite place in the world to play. Um, one day, you know, always my hope my hope is the Ryman, but uh, the Lexington Village Theater has amazing sound. It's a wonderful, warm place to play. I love it there. Well, thank you so much for doing this for us tonight, helping us raise money for folks like that, like you, musicians, waiters, waitresses, uh, kitchen workers, hospitality workers, CBB people. I mean, they're all people that have been displaced right now because of this insanity that's going on. So I really appreciate that you're helping us out. We're all in this together. Uh, I can't do my job without all of them. So I'm more than happy to help. So my pleasure. Would you mind inspiring us with just one more song? Can you give us one more song? Oh, I I think we lost her. Tom, can you hear me okay? I can hear. We did not lose John. John, can you give us one more song? Sure. <laughs> you sure. Mind playing something for us? There'll be a lot of people tuning off rather quickly. So we <laughs> well, don't no, we'll tell people you're going to sing until they donate more money. That's what we'll do. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's bring Dave. Uh, oh, there she is. Can you hear Hello. us? Now? I, I can. I can hear you. Let's. Can you hear me? Yep. Why don't you belt out one last song for us? All right. All right. Sun's going down on a Michigan sky. Perfect time for taking a ride. Smelling the air makes me feel so alive. This old Saturn's still running all right. I think I'll stay out late tonight. Got no one to answer to. I got the sun roof open, the radio on, cranking out my favorite song, one we'd always sing along to. Oh, and how you'd howl off me just to make me smile, hold my hand while we go wild. It's memories like this I still hold on to. Oh, it's times like this that make me think of you. Girls are meeting me up about ten. You'll be staring as I walk in. I bet he'll call you before this night is through. The band starts playing a Seeger song. Any luck, we won't be hanging here long. Jenny says, let's get out for it too. I got the sunroof open, the radio on, cranking out my favorite song. One we always sing along to. Oh, and how you'd howl a key just to make me smile. Oh, my hair while we drove a while. Memories like this, I still hold on to. Oh, it's times like this that make me think of you. Wonder where you'll find yourself tonight. Such a waste of this moon shining so bright. How did we lose track of what we had? Julianne, thank you again so much for doing this. Stay safe, uh, stay home, and then when, when we get back out, I'll come see you. Thank you so much. Okay, Take thank care. you. Well, it's time to bring back the gentleman who inspired this entire thing to remind us once again why we are here and why this is so important. That's right, the hardest working man in the Michigan business <laughs> who's wearing a tuxedo top and pajama bottoms, yeah. Dave Lorenz. In a log home. Hey, guys, I've really enjoyed tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been really great. And I know this is just the beginning of what's going to be something that we're going to remember for a very long time, a time that Michigan, all of us came together in support of one another. Um, you know, I know that everybody's feeling like we've we've lost control of so much right now. It's true. We've lost control of what we can do and what we want to do. And there's one thing we can control, and that is how we treat others and, and what we do for other people. So right now is your opportunity really to take control and to be part of the solution by giving whatever you can afford to give to this fund, mrlaef.org, the relief fund for displaced hospitality workers from all throughout Michigan. Pretty soon, we're going to be able to see them again. We're going to put them back to work. We're going to get back to work. And uh, that means for the entire state in a lot of ways. But right now, as we stay home to keep other people safe, one thing we can control is how we treat each other, what we say to each other, what we do for each other. 
So, you know, reach out to people you haven't talked to for a while. Let them know you care. And let people in Michigan know you care about them by giving to this fund right now. Guys, I've enjoyed it so much. I can't wait for tomorrow. I might even wear pants. I was going to say, speaking of getting back to work, I will see both you gentlemen back here, same time, same place, 7 p.m., um, and we'll do it all over again. It's Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We appreciate it. And like uh, everyone said, we'll see you again tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. I'm John Gonzalez. Tom Dalton. And Dave Lorenz. I'm going back to the symphony now. <laughs> Not. <laughs>